This video is about the Yanmar maze generator. It's a model 3.5 or 4.0 depending on how you wire it up. 3.5 is 50 hertz and 4.0 is 60 hertz power generation. This is a 3kW diesel power generator designed for marine use. It's enclosed in a structure which circulates air inside the structure and it uses salt water pumped into a heat exchanger to cool the air inside the structure. So although the diesel engine is air cooled, the air inside the box is cooled by seawater and the heat exchanger inside the box. This keeps noise and airflow away from inside the boat. The generator portion of this unit, which is actually an alternator, has failed and the purpose of this video is to describe how I'm trying to reverse engineer this alternator rewind the windings and make the unit functional once again. First word about these drawings. These drawings are high quality drawings drawn by Corel Draw 7 which is old therefore I can't get above 300 dots per inch on the detail so I have to zoom into the portion of the drawing that we want to talk about and that will be used throughout this video. This generator is unique in several ways. The first way is that it's a self-excited generator. There's no braces, there's no slip rings, nothing. The way it works is it has a capacitor across the exciter winding and that builds on the residual magnetic fields left in the iron core when you start up the generator. And it builds up and it reaches saturation. At this point, the iron core of the stators is saturated, therefore we have a constant voltage output relatively speaking. The next thing unique about this generator is it's designed for 50 hertz or 60 hertz. If you notice across the top, there are taps up on top and those are used for the 50 hertz. Since 50 hertz is slower, each winding generates less voltage so they have an extra tap for 50 hertz. For normal 60 hertz, you simply run the bottom two wires. For example, pot one is one phase And pot two is the other phase of the primary power windings. If you look at pot one for a minute, the red three at the bottom, when it's connected to the white three, generates 120 volts AC. And on the other phase, the blue three at the bottom, connected to the black three at the bottom, generates the other 120 volt phase. So you can parallel these phases, you can put them in series to have a split phase 220. You can parallel them to get twice the current at 120, or you can just simply tie them in series so that they end up being 240 without a split phase. In the center of the drawing you'll find the CB, which means charge the battery. There's two parallel phases here too. The black one over to the green one on the bottom left generates 20 volts, and the black one to the green one on the right generates another 20 volts. Those are peak values. And if you're running 50 hertz and the black one goes up to the blue two at the top left with tape or the blue two at the top right. So once again we can run 50 hertz or 60 hertz and charge the vehicle battery. It does need a DC voltage regulator to control the battery charge current. And last but not least, we also have the exciter winding on the right-hand side labeled ECC. It's also 50 hertz or 60 hertz capable. And once again, red one to white one is for 60 hertz, and red one to black two at the top is for 50 hertz. Next, we'll take a close look at the exciter windings. Notice that there's two yellow windings on the right side, and there's two pink windings on the left side. The one pink wanting to split and we'll show it here in this pictorial diagram here on the right side of this picture. There was winding B at the bottom, A in the middle, C in the middle, D at the top. D is the split winding. So if you look there's one, two, there's three full windings and one the fourth winding is split. So that's two halves, two halves, two halves, which is six and a half is seven versus eight. So the sixty hertz is seven eighths the voltage of the 50 hertz, this allows the 50 hertz to have nearly the same voltage when it's running the engine slower. And the capacitor, you can see it down here, it says 20 microfarad capacitor. 
runs between either the 60 hertz connection, which is white up there, or it runs to the black two, which is a 50 hertz connection. And either way, either way it charges and saturates the stator core with its magnetic flux. The road assembly is also unique in this alternator. It's a two-pole rotor. There's a winding on each pole, and there's a diode across each winding. So as the armature, which these windings are mounted to, as it rotates, it senses the residual magnetism in the stator metal assembly, and that causes current to flow in this rotor armature. The current flow in this rotor armature causes more induced voltage into the exciter windings. They cause more induced current into the rotor armature and it snowballs into saturation. Whereas the, uh, the metal of the stator is fully saturated and slight RPM changes won't affect it. You notice there's also Zener, there's a Voltage limiting device called a thyristor installed across each winding on this rotor assembly. What that does, that prevents over voltage in case of a short in the power windings. This prevents the things from burning itself up because it limits how much voltage can be across the rotor assembly coils. Therefore, it limits the amount of magnetic field the rotor assembly can generate. And this also limits the saturation field of the stator windings. So it's a safety device having these thyristors. And the diodes are what allow it to operate without any connections to the moving rotor assembly. This alternator is already far more complex than a typical alternator, but it gets even worse. Here's a wiring diagram of the alternator. It's very complex and we'll break it down later. I just want to get started here. There's four red windings at the top, and there's two blue, red, two blue windings at the bottom and two dotted black windings. The dotted black windings are the windings that were burned up when I received this alternator. They would normally be two blue windings also. So basically we have four windings on the top and four windings on the bottom for power generation. First, I want you to notice that there's six windings in each one of the coil slots. So when we saw four coils earlier, it's really six times four, 24 coils involved. As you can see, this is a very complex generator. It's not just a simple old thing. All these windings in the same slots complicates everything. And the self-exciting complicates everything. So when I rewind this, it has to be done properly. There can't be any mistakes or it won't work. After reading through several patents, I discovered that as stated here, to remove odd order harmonics, the auxiliary winding has three slot pitch, while the power windings have nine slot pitch. Also, the rotor winding pulsating DC diodes equals 120 hertz rotating flux field. So this 120 hertz rotating flux field is what allows the mixing to cause the harmonics. And the third order harmonic is the worst one. So the slot arrangement of the windings compensates for that. Another concern I have for this project is why did they use dual windings? Why do they have two windings in parallel for each function? Two red ones, two black ones. Does this have something to do with reducing harmonics? I just don't know. I haven't found anything that talks about that. Perhaps it has to do with harmonics because you would think it would make more sense to put in one winding with, with a lower gauge wire which could handle the current. Because right now, they, I measured they're using 18 gauge for the power windings, which can handle 16 amps. And the unit's only supposed to put out 12.5 amp, amps per phase. So I don't know what the double windings are, unless it is, in fact, has something to do with removing harmonics. If anyone knows the answer to this, please give me a comment and let me know. These are the things I'm concerned about before I start rewiring this alternator. I want to do it once, have it right, first time. So thanks for any help that anyone provides in their comments. Now you can understand what these 
six yellow wires are between slot 7 and 17. These are the six wires shown in the other picture that connects one slot to the next slot. In other words, they put all these, these four red windings in series, basically. So that's purpose of all these yellow lines. There's six of them per slot. That's why I know there's three groups of coils. Each group of coils has two coils, so I know there's six coils in these slots. So once again, anyone that can help me understand this, I would really appreciate it, and have a good day. I think I know why this alternator failed. The uh, battery charging windings are tied directly to the voltage regulator, which is a solid state regulator with no fuse in between the two. So if one of the batteries developed a short, then it probably shorted out the voltage regulator, which started burning up the charge windings, which in turn burned up the associated coil loops inside the same slot, which caused one set of power phases to also short out. And I think that's how it got in this situation. There should have been a fuse between the charger windings and the voltage regulator, and there was not.